today I kind of just want to talk about training types. I think this is a good place to start because every time we talk, we'll talk about like programs that we've made, programs we're making for people, different trainings we've done ourselves. Like recently, Joe has talked a lot about um, the training that you've done. And then Aaron, you, you're in the same boat. Hey, look at my first program, stuff like that. So I definitely want to look at these, um, the four main types, and you guys got a, a lot of like different knowledge. Aaron, you got some great book knowledge, which is always a good place to start because if you don't know like the basic anatomy how are you going to come up with a detailed program instead of just a three sets of 10 let's do that rest for a minute three sets of 10 and just be so like standard instead of going well this is a type one type two muscle fiber this is explosive so we actually don't want to do that many reps like all those kind of things get a little hairy if you don't like if you don't know so that's kind of why i want to talk about these things so let's get it going so First thing, talk about power. Joe, you probably have the best <laughs> background in this stuff. And I think yeah. because you have the best background, hit it off. So basically, time, rest times, uh, time du duration for exercise, times per week, whatever you want to kind of like take on that. And also repetition, how many repetitions. Um, and you can also like get it uh, mixed in there, how many times per week, whatever you want to do with those. And then movements, maybe some specific movements that um, for people listening could be like, oh yeah, that's a, that's a power movement. And I can say that's a power movement. Not so like a skull crusher. Yeah, we can get it explosive. We can actually get it plyometric even. But when I think skull crusher, I'm thinking stability. I'm thinking isolated tricep. I'm not thinking power. Yeah. So anyway. Yeah. Well, I'll definitely say that Aaron is the most explosive of all of us. Um, so he would have also some, some good input into that. Um, you but are explosive. When, it, when it comes to power, um, that's been the thing that probably I've been learning a lot um, this last few, few months and, and just since I started this master's program. Um, mm -hmm. So when, when we go to the strength program here, everybody power cleans. Um, and everybody uh, does some sort of like the football team does the – um, jammer, uh, which is, yep. If I could show you here, this is, I, the, I love the jammers, the machine. How do I invert this video? So, right there, um, if you don't know what that is, it's just like it's very football specific. Um, you see, you see athletes doing sprints and stuff like that. So, uh, I started questioning, I was like, well, why have us as tennis players, or have I not really seen much of power cleans? And I actually wrote a a pretty detailed uh, biomechanical analysis on, on the power clean um, for my biomechanics class. And it's just like a lot of insights on why, because um, when, when you look at the triple extension that you see on the power clean, that's what it makes it very explosive. So if you look at a sprinter and you will see the, the extension of the ankle, the knee uh, and the hips uh, simultaneously. Um, and, and that is what they are trying to mimic. So, mm -hmm. Um, I, I come from a, an athletic background, so I, I cannot really speak for, I mean, I, I can only say for athletes because in a way, I don't see a reason why a normal individual would want to be powerful unless he wants to. So usually when you talk about power, you talk about how can you transfer it to your sport? How can you, you make it to, to translate to what you're going to do on the court? Uh, mm -hmm. on the field or whatever it is. Yeah. So uh, when, you, when we look at, at power cleans, for example, um, that really mimics and, and you can overload in a very uh, interesting fashion where mm -hmm. um, you create that triple extension uh, and, and you can go very heavy. So uh, when we look at the, the uh, general physical preparedness uh, instead of specific, which would be let's actually sprint for a for, for, uh, uh, a, a football player like obviously they have to sprint but they also yeah. have to gain that strength so that's that's what why we attack the power clean for example it's one of the most common power exercises and you work on that that trooper extension um so a couple exercises like as you said like we don't think of a skull crusher as a power, power exercise even though you can still create power through it we don't think of, of, of a bench press as a power exercise even though you can go through it and, and make it powerful um, right. Those exercises, they are by nature powerful. Uh, they, they, the goal of the exercise is actually be as powerful as you can, no, no matter what 
variation you do. So mm. um, when you look at sprinting, that's, that's uh, one of the most probably underrated power exercises. And, and Aaron has a lot of experience with that where, I mean, he can definitely tell that like that creates a lot of power um, through your hips, through your hip flexors, through your hamstrings, hitting the floor and all of that. Um, so lower leg, I would say um, any sort of jumping, box jumps, um, and um, there's actually a very there are different exercises that you can think of that can be explosive. Usually, they have to involve some sort of triple extension. So in the jumping, there's triple extension. Sprinting, there's there's triple extension. And that is why uh, I would say the power clean is the is the king of those exercises the, for for the lower body specifically. Uh, when it comes to the upper body. Um, the push movement that I would say is the most is the jammer, the ground-based jammer. Um, mm-hmm. That would be a, an exercise that you can just really power through. It comes from the legs. It comes from the hips, but also it comes from the upper body a lot. Um, right. And then um, some people like the muscle-ups uh, as a possibility um, for, for a power movement. Uh, now we're that, even – we're getting that population even smaller with, <laughs> with the muscle up because not only do you have to have enough strength, you have to have enough, um, well, strength. To, so it's like relative strength to your body yeah. weight because yeah. you could be strong so, in the jammers or in the power clean, but you might not be able to do a muscle up, let alone a pull up. Yeah. So, I mean, to give a, a, a quick example of like my power day, uh, right now it involves a set of uh, hand cleans to push press. Uh, push okay. press is another another one that it's very explosive push. Um, yeah. Then I go to do muscle ups. I do three or four, and then I do four uh, as, uh, reps of gr- uh, ground based jammers. And then I go into uh, if if I want to do my leg part a little bit more extensively, uh, mm-hmm. I'll do some box jumps and depth jumps. Uh, so those are some of the exercises that you can probably think of. I mean, we all heard of them. Uh, they're more innovative. Uh, any sort of jumping, sprinting, or power clean variation, I would say those are uh, your main types. Um, so, how many like how many reps are you doing when you do your power cleans, or even when you're doing your jammers? You said yeah, three so, to four on your muscle ups, but I'm just curious. Yeah. So the the reason for that the muscle ups is because. Uh, as you said, there is such a hard exercise that sometimes I can't, I can't just do uh, four and I have to make sure that I maintain good technique. So, right. uh, and then that, that's one thing about power exercises. If you can't maintain good technique, uh, then don't do it. Uh, then uh, don't um, go for more repetitions. So um, repetition range, uh, it's anywhere from one to, the NSA would say tipping the five, the five to six mm-hmm. rep range, but I would, I can hear you. Two, I've seen a lot of two sets. I've seen a lot of five sets. So uh, you, you, can, you can go, you have a lot of flexibility with the sets. It just depends on what you're trying to do. Um, and then finally, um, the frequency. Um, I would say that most most programs, they, they work with two to three uh, times a week uh, with uh, the power exercises. Mm. Two to three times a week. Also, Joe, I was going to add in for people that might not know, uh, you mentioned a lot of triple extension. Can you explain what that is? Yeah, so triple extension uh, is the movement where your, your, from your ankles, knees, and hips at the same time, they're both they're all three of them extended um simultaneously so that's a, the time where it's a transition phase uh between the transition and the second pull uh which again i'm not going to go into details if you want to understand what a transition and second pull of a, a power clean is you can just google it real quick but it's basically um the, the moment where the bar touches your 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 thigh and the moment where you start pulling it high so you can catch Right in between those two phases, uh, the triple extension. So your your ankle is going to go into plantar flexion. Uh, your your knees are going to extend, and your hips are going to come through. Um, some people call it pop the hips, or or it, again, it's it's that moment where your your hips and your knees and your ankle they're all 
extended. They, they're yeah. not, yeah. there's no flexion in the movement. And if there is, it's a faulty movement. Again, that is exactly what's happening when uh, your, your rear leg is uh, sprinting. So while your, your front leg is flexing, so you're, you're flexing your front leg, but your back leg is, you have plantar flexion, which is extension of the, the ankle. So you have your, your knees are completely extended and your hips are extended in, in a right. sprint position. So right. that's, that's why, uh, that's why trooper. So how long are you resting in between your, uh, your sets? Okay. So that's another, another thing that, um, a lot of people, they have a lot of mi misconception with, with, um, the NSA recommends for speed drills, uh, to be a one to 10 ratio. So let's say we do a five second exercise. Uh, you go uh, to 50 uh, seconds rest. So you, you just multiply it by 10. Um, as a general power exercise, um, we, we're going to see rest between two to five minutes. So one, one common mistake that we see is them, them not resting enough, uh, not, not enough rest more than resting too much because again you gotta if you're thinking about power it means all out it means you're giving everything that you have for sure and and, and then you can give everything you have if you you do four i don't know 135 hand clings uh four repetitions you rest 45 seconds and do it do it again you're not going to be able to give it all um all out so for sure um, that's that's actually one of the things that how do you program uh, for an athlete that can only come in for 45 minutes, that's when we get, it gets a little tricky. Uh, mm -hmm. and that's when we usually implement other exercises in between that will not necessarily uh, damage your performance. So if I do a, gotcha. a power clean for, I don't know, four sets of four, and um, for that two-minute rest, well, I need that, that time for them to do. So a lot of times for the girls, they, they do power cleans and they will do like a incline dumbbell bench press. Uh, and I mean, yes, you're, you're, you're using muscle that will be used, but they're not prime movers. They're not secondary movers. They're not going right. to really be the main mover. So that, that's how you, you go around that resting time and you're still able to, to get a lot out of the workout. Because that's, again, they yeah. come in and they, they, they only have about 45 to an hour tops. Like you're not going to see high school, college, even professional athletes. They're going to have like an hour and 30 minutes to do to rest two to five minutes every time. So for sure. And people, a lot of times people think during my rest periods, I'm wasting my time or I'm in your case, I'm wasting my money as your client. Like, why are you having me rest for a minute and a half? And a lot of times, especially if we're doing like hit training, when you're resting, that's actually the most effective. After you spike your heart rate, we burn carbs here. We let that heart rate drop. We're burning fat. And a lot of times it's like, okay, my heart rate's dropping. Like, I feel like I'm wasting time. So that's good. I mean, that's good to like, to bring up, hey, we're not wasting time. Actually, let's go do a supplementary exercise that's kind of non-related. That's yeah. good. Okay, so strength. Aaron, hit this up. So Aaron, one summer, he left, he left us a scrawny man and he came back. He beefy, beefy, <laughs> or should I say, a chicken man because he ate like almost what was it 200 and was it over 200 grams of protein per day was like your average i mean like yeah it was pretty much it was pretty much a an experiment over the summer right uh, to see how much what my body would react to with ungodly amounts of protein <laughs> and you know at the time we we were starting to kind of explore you know can there be problems with our um, or certain organs when we consume this much. And so there's some, you know, mm. uh, there could be even misconceptions to the point of they, you know, there's some people that might say, if you eat this much amount of protein per day, you're going to have problems. And um, I remember, I remember when that happened because I was, I was warning you at the beginning of summer, that's right. not a good idea. And then after going to that conference, what, like half a year later, I heard, and, and, and I realized we were believing too much protein, too much nitrogen in your kidneys, hard nitrogen, on your kidneys, yeah. completely debunk that myth. It was actually a myth. It was just like a common thing. Even in medical, like people with kidney disease, first thing they do is limit their protein. And at that case, it might be effective, but 
all these studies came back and you're a walking study uh, unless you actually did have kidney damage but like all these studies came back and the kidneys had no negative impact there was no negative correlation between spike in protein and renal function so i remember that i dude i remember like telling you don't do it don't do it don't do it and you're telling me and i'm like oh my word you're how are you feeling and you're like i'm feeling good yeah yeah and And go ahead and then you came back like a beast like just way literally 20 more pounds or something like that (laughs) yeah it was definitely a time when i when i put on I wasn't focusing on anything else other than just pretty much mass. And uh, <laughs> it goes to show, I mean, if anyone ever, you know, were to talk to me or to listen to this, I would tell them, you know, I, I was um, kind of a self-study that if you consume a lot of protein, as long as you're um, drinking a lot of water with it and you're eating your other macronutrients in the right amounts, because you do need those, um, you, right. can, you can really put on some mass pr- pretty well. And I think a lot of people just don't eat enough protein with the diets yeah. in America. Yeah. And especially yeah, that, how it's broken down, it's a small amount. Um, personal study here. Um, I would say that um, I increased my amount of protein by probably 180 a day or so. And, uh, and, and, I, and that was the time where I was able to just like quickly, like within – uh, I think it was like six weeks or so I, I put in like 10 pounds uh, yeah. or close to that, which for me, like my body type um, and my metabolism is really fast and like 10 pounds, is a lot of weight. I mean, I, I was just, whoa, like what happened? Like I can just, j- just see like my shoulders were just like popping more than ever. Not that like I was huge or anything like that. Well, just to you, just to you for sure. Yeah. But comparing my, me to myself, it was just like, wow, like this is, this is crazy because I was just eating a bunch of protein. Protein right. helps, helps with the strength. It does. I mean, I mean, yeah. it's muscle recovery. So anyway, hit this up, T- uh, break it down. Tell me some strength tips, maybe just some general tips. Uh, I, honestly, I think general public is going to know strength five by five, three by 10. What am I supposed to do there? Um, you know, and there's, I mean, there's too many, maybe let's say misconceptions just to like uh, bro talk in the gym and stuff like that. But specifically with like strength, um, what are some, what are some things that, that, you know? Yeah. I, I kind of want to, when I talk about strength, I like to compare it. So I might kind of compare and contrast to power with, you know, what Joe was just going over. For sure. So for example, if we're talking about um, one of the biggest questions within strength, I think is, um, they'll ask, okay, how heavy should I go and how many repetitions should I do? Mm, so yes. Strength, Joe was talking about, well, these rep ranges, it, it could be about three to five for um, power. It's mm-hmm. actually pretty similar with strength. Um, a, lot of, a lot of research, and especially from the NSCA, would recommend um, repetitions of six or below. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, I would attest that that's actually um, – pretty standard you know it's going to vary a little bit but if you're going a lot more than six repetitions um you're getting into some different zones of training um especially if you're getting you know some guys they might be doing repetitions of like 10 or 12 and they still say that they're training for strength Um, but the reality is yes you will get stronger but you're it's not isolated strength training Um, so i kind of like to make that distinction and as far as Joe also was talking about um, loads. He talked about a little bit of the loads. So once you know, let's say you're bench pressing, the bench press is almost what everyone thinks about when they're talking about strength, right? True. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a good strength exercise. Um, but if you're talking about, okay, if I know what my one rep maximum is, my one mm-hmm. rep max, a lot of guys don't actually calculate what they should be loading on the bar once they know their one rep max. So if you're good talking point. about uh, a good load would be um, you want to go at least 85% or more. Mm-hmm. You know, these, these numbers um, aren't um, set in stone to where if you're doing 84% or something like that, you're not training strength. But a good recommendation is 85% of the one at max. Um, Joe, also, to compare and contrast, he also said, I believe, he was talking about um, the rest time. So he was saying, you know, like, wasn't it like two to five minutes, Joe? Mm-hmm. yeah so the um 
the thing about strength, a lot of people don't take enough rest time for strength either. So mm -hmm. you're going to want to be taking, I would say, at least about two minutes, especially if you are really doing 85% of your one rep max and you're repping out, you know, that usually correlates to about six repetitions, actually, based off yeah. that load. And that's um, intense. It, it should be extremely intense. And a lot of people, if you can do a minute rest time and you're training for strength, you're not, you're not going to your full, um, your full intensity. And, and uh, I would just point out that like, that is why uh, you go in and you, for your first set, you are able to do like, let's say, I don't know, 185 and you're like for six repetitions. And in the second set, like if you don't rest enough, like you just, you can tell that that was hard or harder. And then, or either like you just, you weren't able to hit the sets. Uh, the the repetition uh, for for the, the consecutive sets so um, that that is one of the things that like you you can you can experiment yourself and see like go get, grab one load and try to not rest at least two minutes see if right. you can keep and make sure that that load is like your eighty five percent which is your your six rep max um, you, you're not going to be able to it's like sure. no not, it, it's just impossible for you to, if you don't rest enough and I would say even like there's studies um, from like bodybuilder builders that um, they were resting like up to ten minutes um, wow. to get the the full recovery. Like those guys, they obviously mm -hmm. they had enough time and that that was their their life, livelihood. But if you look at it, like they were they were like, listen, I need to get my body fully recovered. I need all my energy, all my ATP, all, and I, I don't want to go to the needy and greedy of the the science behind it. But I need all all of that to just recover and be ready to go again, and sure. and and they saw like some great results. So, I mean, as you said, Aaron, it's like that's that's something that you cannot just. Oh, I'm doing four rep repetitions, and here we go. Let's rest a minute and a half. No, it just it, you're not going to be able to fully reach your potential. And yeah. I'll say a thing on that. When you put 85% on a bar and you can hit six reps, if it's your 85% of your one rep max, that is antagonizing. I have, like, even to this day, I don't even remember a time where I've hit six reps of my 85. I've gotten 82, I've gotten 83% of my one RM, but when you hit 85%, six reps is like literally maximum potential. And yeah. so I always remember reading that in the, in the NSCA books and, and ACSM yeah. books. And I'm like, eight, how, how is that accurate? I feel like it should be five, but Hey, whatever. That's just me. like, I think that the, the fifth one, you get it and you're already like, Oh crap. Yeah. And I'm, then I'm at the this, wall. like the sixth one is literally like, you're pushing yourself. Yes. So you're very like, yes. like you got to train mentally to be able to get this uh, 85% for six. I don't think like that's another topic for another day, but like it, it, it's like all here at that point for because sure. you're, it is. Yeah. Go ahead. Aaron. Yeah. I hit that up. So, okay. So that's good. At least two minutes rest time. A lot of people do those 90 seconds. We think 60 seconds for regular and 90 seconds for strength. So that's, I mean, that's a good, good thing to point out more than two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For full strength. And if you're going really heavy, I would even say like go for three. Like if you feel like you, if that's your goal, strength. Make sure that you actually like. Oh, I don't feel fully curvy. Like go, go for, go for three minutes. You know, and it's not a problem. Also, to I was going to mention to clarify for people um, who get confused between power and strength, they're mm -hmm. actually they're more related than you think. Mm -hmm. um, like mathematically, power. Um, there's like two different ways to define it. It can be force times velocity. So if yeah. you think force, what you can, what your muscles can produce times velocity is basically the speed. Um, yeah. in this direction. And so when you think power, think um, I'm, I'm going as hard as I can, but I also need to consider velocity is super important because force times velocity. Um, and so you are stressing both of those. Another way to, um, Define power is work over time. And so the amount of work you can do is like the amount of force that you can displace over a certain distance. So it's, it's the same idea because time is involved and you stress time. So to do power, you can't go 
100% of your one rep max, or you won't be doing that movement fast. Um, so when we're talking about strength, the reason um, that we can go well above 85% and still be training strength is because it's actually uh, a lot of times you can calculate it using the same equation, but you're not stressing time. Time doesn't really matter yeah. while you're doing the exercise. You just want to focus on the force aspect. Yeah. I'm glad you said that because there's like two different ways to see that. So you, you can focus on for power and, and I'm, I'm tracing back here. Um, like if you look at, at the power and you decrease the time, it increases the power. So if, if we're doing a movement and, and I, I can go fast, that's powerful. But also if you increase the force, you're going you're gonna to also increase the power, uh, which often leads to longer period of time. So mm -hmm. there's two ways for you to increase power. You can either decrease the time or increase the amount of weight that you're doing. Um, but again, you got to make sure that those two components, they are uh, working together. They're not just like, as, as Aaron said, if you go your, your true one repetition max, you're not going to be able to move that bar very fast. So you got to be able to work around with like, okay, what is uh, a good repetition, uh, a, good, a good weight that will make me, it will be challenging, but I can, I can go fast enough that I'm actually producing some power. So there's uh, different studies. Uh, for example, like TCU, uh, Texas Christian University, I believe, uh, their baseball team and their baseball strength coach, they, they worked with 30% uh, of their uh, 1RM. And, and the reason for that is just because they were trying to focus on that power and they saw some really good results. Uh, but again, oftentimes they, they try to work between the like 60 to 80 percentage uh, of your repetition max. That's usually where where you see most of the, the power exercises. And a lot of the times you see that percentage of your one rep max on the higher end because we're dealing with people in more contact sports. We're dealing with people who want to put on a lot of size. Example would be tennis player does not care. Joe, you don't care if you're huge. I mean, now you might, but especially when you're performing. You don't care if you're huge, so your power. Let's. We're not going to decrease um, your time as much as we are we decrease your weight. Incre you know. So if you're being more explosive, um, using thirty percent. Studies are showing, and and coaches are clearly using this. Um, studies are showing it's just as effective because of that equation. And and I think a lot of times we think uh, explosive and power. We think contact sports. So we're thinking rugby. We're thinking football. We're thinking like hit. But when you hit baseball. We want that time to be fast. And with tennis, we want that time to be fast. So I remember when we first talked about that and I was like, 30%? What? Yeah. That's so contrary to like the book. But the book has to use, has to pick a side. Are we going to go with time or are we going to go with force? And so most of the time they go with force. It's going to reach yeah. more of the general uh, population. So, okay, Aaron, hit up some, hit up some strength movements. I know you said bench. Um, that's a good one. So yeah. I, I don't know, like what are some other movements? Yeah, so to put down some movements for strength, I wouldn't talk about triple extension necessarily. When you think about triple extension, which Joe explained, that's going to be the way your body moves when all those are when all those joints are extending. Mm -hmm. um, it's almost—I mean, to my knowledge, it's almost exclusively going to be a power exercise. So don't think about triple extension. Think about—I um, would—I would start with explaining um, a core exercise. So for strength, you want to do um, generally, especially what you want to stress is a core exercise. A core exercise is what's going to use more than one joint. Um, it's going to use big muscle groups, and it is also going to be very transferable to um, different sports. Um, so a barbell, a lot of times you're going to be doing things with barbells simply mm -hmm. because um, it's a bilateral exercise. You're using both sides of your body. You once you become more experienced, you can generate more, more force. So a bench press is really good. Um, a barbell back squat is also very popular. Um, you're also going to see what's called de a barbell deadlift. Um, the reason those three are mentioned so much is because they, they meet all the requirements for a core exercise. Got it. That's Got awesome. It. Okay. That's awesome. So, okay. Jumping on. Okay, so with uh, hypertrophy, hypertrophy, that's another movement, uh, or that's another training type. Um, this one, 
is probably going to be the more common one because a lot of people like to do the three sets of 10. That's a traditional or, or even two sets of 10 often prescribed uh, through the ACSM. Hypertrophy basically means um, we're, we're looking at the muscle fiber and looking for its growth. Okay. So we're not looking <laughs> at the number of muscle cells in your bicep. We're not trying to like replicate the cells as much as we are just work with the fibers. So the long fibers, we're just trying to expand those to grow them. So that's, that's like the focus. And so typically the repetitions are just eight to 12 reps. That's like where it's always, always been talked about. What's interesting is if we're dealing with type one or type two muscle fibers, their repetitions are going to change. And so um, a type one muscle fiber is going to have more mitochondria. So it's going to have more oxidative capacity. So it's not going to burn out as fast. So think about postural muscles. Do you ever think about your neck muscles throughout the day? No, you don't because, well, unless you're focused on your posture for that day, but you're not thinking about it. These muscles up here that are supporting this, the ones in your upper back that are supporting you, holding you up all day, your core, a lot of that's going to be type one because it can just continually have blood in there and be contracted even slightly or fully. Um, but if we're dealing with type two, those bad boys burn out pretty fast. Easy one, bicep. Bicep is typically an easy one to think, okay, type two muscle fibers. Now the difference would be um, where we have, I know we've talked about studies about how there's like Olympic athletes who have hybrid type one, type twos, and there's so many like type one, a type two B and different types of muscle fibers, but keeping it general, um, we might break down muscle fibers someday, but um, keeping it general type two, you're going to burn out quick. And so if we're thinking of like a compound movement or a core exercise, like you were talking about, Aaron, um, you're going to have muscles in there that are probably type one and some that are type two, but also in the same muscle, you can have in the same muscle area, you can have type one and type two. And so, and again, when force is there, that's going to change what type of muscle fibers are being used. So our legs, I mean, we can, we can walk all day. Our calves have great oxidative capacities, but if we put on 500 pounds on our back, we might only be doing five repetitions of calf raises. So hypertrophy is just growth of the muscle fiber, um, which is why it's kind of a hairy area because you can do low reps or high reps. And so for our, for do I sound weird? I'm hearing like an echo. A little bit. A little Not bit. bad. Oh, that sounds bad. Okay. Yeah, so for arm workouts, a lot of guys have chosen to do high repetitions, even 12 to 15 repetitions um, to get their arms bigger because there's, again, more type 2 fibers in your arms typically. Um, so this is where most people are going to lie is actually hypertrophy. But that's, and I think that's where like maybe a misconception is with a lot of geriatric population that I've worked with, because I write up, even myself, I'll write up two sets of 10 and say, you're going to get stronger from this exercise. So then they're automatically thinking, oh, this is strengthening. What can I do mm -hmm. to get my endurance or my, my wind is some say, get my wind up or my heart rate up or stuff like that. And so again, like keeping it general endurance strength. It's kind of like the general breakdown, but within strength, you have power, strength, hypertrophy. Within endurance, you have hypertrophy and endurance. So yeah. there's hypertrophy is kind of like the bridge between the, the types. So yeah. eight to 12 reps, typically rest time, it almost always is going to be 60 to 90 seconds per set. Um, yeah. And that's just a traditional way of doing it. And it's, it's real effective. Uh, depending if you're doing maybe say like on the lower end of your hypertrophy, you might see that. And keep in mind, are you going to get bigger muscles from doing strength? Probably. Are your muscle fibers going to get stronger from doing strength? Yes. Are your muscle fibers going to get stronger from doing hypertrophy? Not just bigger, but stronger. Yes. So again, we're still, we're still working out. We're still creating just better healthy habits for our body. But sure. specifically, again, that's kind of like the point of this video and this podcast is specifically what's the difference and how does the different, like, what's the different change? So if we're focused on hypertrophy, you're probably going to see more muscle mass increase. Um, maybe not as much fat loss if your focus was weight loss. And so endurance might be better for that. So yes, you're always going to see different um, overlaps between training types, but mm -hmm. that's just a quick rundown. And then movements, I mean, this is going to include 
all them bodybuilding movements. And that's what I, re- yeah. I really like to, to prescribe those. So we can get hypertrophy from doing 12 reps on a bench press. You can get it from doing eight reps on a bicep curl. So this is going to include a lot of weight machines. And I think that's probably where most people are going to lie with hypertrophy. Weight machines are great. And also when you start getting into free weights, when we start talking more barbell movements, that's when we can say, well, typically those are more strength uh, than they are hypertrophy. Mm -hmm. So a lot of dumbbell movements are great for hypertrophy. Now the types of exercises you do can make a difference. Um, So if you're doing a, a close grip bench press, you might you might be working more power if your elbows are tucked in. You might be working more hypertrophy if your elbows are flared out and you're doing high repetitions. So even in the movement itself and how you're moving pat- and your movement patterns can be different. And biomechanics play a huge role into are you working power most effectively? Are you working your hypertrophy most effectively? So I would say movements are going to be all of them because you can always change them in. Except if we're, if we're doing a power exercise – we don't want to be doing it for 12 reps thinking we're going to get bigger muscle groups. So think about maybe isolating uh, muscle groups in this instance. So isolateral movements, alternating bicep curls, those are great. Um, even a specific um, just bicep curl with an easy bar or something like that. So now we're working both arms yeah. at the same time. Yeah. Um, bilateral movements are great. So really this is this one we could talk about all day, but we're not. So last one, just want to cover the last one. So endurance training. So what's, what's kind of the deal with endurance training? A lot of people hear endurance and we're thinking running. Oh, I hate running. So uh, whoever wants to take the lead on this one, what do you got? Um, all right. So endurance, I mean, if you're talking general is anything uh, after you hit that hypertrophy area, I mean, it's anything from, 15 to infinite honestly uh i mean there's not really it's just how long can you can you do those things and is that is getting to that point where you always gonna go to the the fatigue the the burning cessation uh that's the type of stuff that um when when you talk about endurance and you think running you think aerobic endurance but here we're talking about anaerobic endurance so i mean when you're talking about lifting weights you're not going to really be working i mean you're going to be working your heart a little bit more but you're not really going to be touching on the aerobic endurance it's more the anaerobic endurance and in your muscle endurance specifically so um yeah i mean it's just it, again it's just like the hypertrophy you're talking about long repetitions and you're talking about i mean 15 to 20 usually that's the where well, as personal trainers or whatever you want to call yourself, that's usually what we go for. Um, and then repetition is very low because you, it, it's the opposite of power. You don't want to go fast. You don't want to go, uh, you don't want to let your muscles recover because you, you're trying to go for long and long periods of time. So, I mean, that's usually when we go for from 30 to 60. Um, some people like to stay closer to the 30. Other people like to stay right in between. And, and again, it's just based on, on the preference and what you're trying to accomplish. Um, but yeah, that's what I would say. Solid. So I think a lot of times when we hear endurance, we do think aerobic activity, like you said, but we're speaking of anaerobic activity via endurance pathways. So again, we're doing a we're doing push-ups. We're going to do 15 to 20 of them or more, you know, of that yeah. movement to work our anaerobic um, exercises, but through an endurance. So this will work definitely more of your your type one, or it'll push your thresholds, your lactate thresholds and your muscles to work more and rely more on your type one muscle fiber. So if we're doing a, a push-up and we're trying to do more than 15, well, you're you, let's say your triceps are going to burn out fast, but you're going to want to rely a lot of, on those chest muscles if you have more type one fibers there. But yeah. so that's a good that's a good thing you brought up. How about how about you, Aaron? Yeah, I was going to mention uh, two things. One, it like Joe Joe made a good point on on the time and the the rest time. Mm-hmm. So it, a lot of people I feel like are confused with they want an exact rest time. So for say for endurance, they're like. 
they might ask me, they're like, I want to know exactly how long to rest. And, and Joe got it right when he said it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a continuum. You can get endurance through a range, but just to give them something, I would, I often kind of say between like 20 and 45 seconds or so. That's not exact. Um, Cause you could go a little less than 20. You could go less, a little bit more than 45, but generally that's kind of a, a good window. Would you guys agree? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, it's like 30 seconds is kind of the av- almost the average there. Yeah. Um, the only thing I was going to mention is from the physiology standpoint, the bit, the biggest thing you're going for in endurance is you're trying to hit that. You're trying to activate that lactic threshold. And yeah. so a lot of people hear that and they don't know what it is. Oh yeah. Um, break it down. Yeah. So the lactate threshold is essentially, um, when you are, let's say you're doing a, a bicep curl and you, you hit 12 reps, you're getting close to 15 reps you start to feel a burning sensation in your muscle. Um, when you're doing power exercises, you're not going to feel that. Um, you, you might see, not feel that. Or are you doing it wrong? Yeah, or, or you're doing it right. And so people wonder why they're feeling that. The lactate threshold is the, that is starting when you start to feel that burn. And essentially what's happening is your body is not able, the amount of oxygen it has, um, and it's going through those oxidative processes, it's not efficient enough to keep your pH at the right level. And so that pH is dropping faster than your oxidative processes could handle what would be like your hydrogen ions that are kind of accumulating. And so it's, it's a complicated process, but essentially you can think of it as your body's not used to handling that much, um, basically metabolic waste that's accumulating in your muscle. So hit the burn. That's what you're saying. We're working towards that burn. Yeah, that, that burn is good. That means you're hitting endurance if you hit the burn and you continue to stay within the burn for a while. Nice, nice. So really movements, again, are going to be like hypertrophy. We can do kind of anything here. And I think one of the biggest things, so first, uh, first we talked about power. Now we're talking about endurance. Complete opposite parts of the spectrum. But if you think of doing power movements for high repetition that's when you can often well let's just say in in general get injured because again my rehab brain jumps in but that's where my performance dude joe he'll agree with me um that's when you can cause injury because that movement was designed for power and now we're trying to translate it into endurance and so then there's going to be this overlap and again we're hitting a lactate threshold with a heavy extensive movement, which are like, let's just say some sort of hip extension movement. It, it's, yeah. it might not be a, a wise thing to do or a wise thing to prescribe to a trainer. Oh, wow. That was Ooh, cool. Yeah. I'll yeah, agree sorry. with you there. Um, yeah. Okay, sweet. One, one thing before we move on from endurance, like yeah. also this is not where you're going to see the most growth uh, in your muscle fibers. This is not where you're going to see the biggest, um, like, there's this big mix, misconception that like, oh, if I just keep going through this and like it's lightweight and I'm just like going forever, that's not the area, that's not the spectrum, the area of the spectrum that you're going to get the most growth. Um, I mean, that's what girls usually, uh, unfortunately, that is a stereotype, but I've seen a lot of that, like they try to go for higher repetitions because they're afraid that they're not going to get, uh, they, they don't want to get bulky and that's a topic yeah. for another time, but um, we just got to be careful to think that like, oh, so if I, all of those, all of these are going to make you stronger in general, all of these are going to grow your muscles, but there's certain areas, especially within strength and hypertrophy, that's where your, your muscles are going to grow the most. Even within power, that's not where your muscle is going to grow, uh, as well as, um, it won't be with endurance. So the, the ends of the spectrum, that's not for uh, the amount of, um, muscle growth, I would say. The in between, that's that's where you're gonna see the most like actual size growth. Yeah, no, that's a good point, especially just to kind of give a diagram on power. We're going on this side of the spectrum, and your body is going to adapt differently. And example, I have a client who we train, and we we mix up his program, but in a progressive way. Instead of going, hey, we just did a power uh, program, now let's do an endurance based program. 
in doing that, you can really obviously have muscle confusion, but also your risk for injury is so much higher because your joints are used to a heavy, maybe explosive load, but they're not ready for continual repetitions of 15 plus after we did three power cleans for three sets, resting three minutes in between. So yeah. again, that spectrum's a big spectrum because um, you want to do stepping stones. And that's why hypertrophy is a great one uh, to use as a stepping stone if you're moving from a program. And so, and again, yeah. it might be more simplistic. It might be more bodybuilding, but after this COVID-19 thing, people are working out at home. So now we're probably doing more endurance-based exercises and workouts more than we mm -hmm. think. Then we want to move yeah. back in the gym and get back into a strength or power program. There can, again, we're jumping spec the size of the spectrum. So you can, your risk for injury goes up naturally, but if you just get back into more basic movements, uh, a hypertrophy range, 8 to 12, even though, again, hypertrophy can occur in any rep range, um, you're, you're going to be a little bit safer because, again, you use it as a stepping stone. So, yeah. hey, I think that's it. Thank you guys for jumping on. Um, we're definitely going to be doing more of these podcasts, so uh, stay tuned to uh, listen to more of these. Okay, that's it.